Today I'm gonna show my first Tessa coil setup. I have been planning to make this a long time ago, but never got in the time, or better yet, never made the time to make it. So finally took some time out of my pulse motor to finish this project, and it is well worth it. It's working pretty good. Um, as you can see, yeah, there's a primary, secondary, the top load is an aluminum soda can or lemonade can. The secretary it is driving on, it's a uh, Slayer Exciter circuitry. Just Google it, you will find plenty of stuff on it, or, uh, or YouTube also. Um, yeah, I made my primary like this because I do like um, the way things are made. Yeah, like a century ago, you know the old-fashioned ways. I think this these stuff are uh, missing. I you say that they are more appealing to the eyes, and I like my setups always. Uh, I like them to be appealing to the eye. They have to work good and look good. Uh, primary uh, is a bunch of strands together to make a thicker wire. Six turns and secondary is 696 turns. Yeah, a lot of six and nines. Those are my number, you can say. Other than that, very basic, very simple. Uh, this is a uh, TIP355 transistor. Uh, these are fast uh, diodes. I uh, forgotten the uh, the numbers, but uh, there are the diodes that they are using in uh, switching mode inverters. This LED here is just to see that the circuitry is on, nothing more. Uh, I'm gonna switch it on, and then I'm gonna do a 13 watt tube to uh, test, and also a uh, 30 watt tube test. The frequency it is running it's about uh, 700 to 730 kilohertz. I have a meter over here. I will measure it just putting these leads over here. It is a very sensitive meter and we'll also put it over here at the switching point of the primary. It's basically the same. Okay let me the battery is uh, 13 volt DC. Uh, the whole system is running on, um, say, 500 milliamps, half an amp. It's not very efficient, but it is working. And that's all that counts for me. Uh, one more thing, uh, it is working good. The only thing I don't like about it when I put a load on it, the amp drop goes up to around 600, maybe even 700 milliamps. That's the only part I don't like about it. It will be good uh, if I can find this other circuitry or modify it so it doesn't draw more when there's a load on it. That is the next step. It is on now. I'm gonna start it with the uh, small uh, neon light as you can see. This lighting up over here. Let me show you the tiny spark. I hope you guys can see it. Eh? Yeah, spark gap. It is purple from color. Let me turn on the lights here. As you can see, it's completely dark. Only thing you can see is my uh, LED, which is saying to me the system is on. I have now the 13 watt small tube in my hand you can see it lighting up the distance is around yeah 30 centimeter just something more around one foot maybe one foot and a half of the uh, of the whole unit of the Tesla coil you can say it's better I'm gonna put this one over here on the ground 
that's also around uh, 30 centimeters. Now I'm gonna take the larger one, switch hands, and there you can see it. There's a larger one. It's a 30 watt tube, lighting up pretty good, not bad at all. The distance is also around, uh, yeah, 30 feet. A little bit less. I think because it's a bigger load. All in all, it is working, yeah, pretty good. Not bad at all for my first uh, Tesla coil. I'm gonna put this one away. I wanna let you guys see. Hopefully, you can see the arcing. I have a screw dryer in my hand. Okay, I think you can see that. That's a spark. Yeah, I have shaky hands, so uh, so it's very difficult to have a continuous gap around it. But the color is purple, deep purple. That's a strange color. <laughs> anyway, so once more here, that's a light 13 watt. So yeah, that's a pretty nice system. What, is, what I also realize is, is that when I put it over here and I come around to the battery, it gets, get, it gets brighter. When I hear at the wires of the input, they're still light. When I go to the other side, it gets dimmer. When I come back to here, brighter. So, uh, hmm, maybe I should um, wound the input uh, wires over here as a spiral and put it inside hmm. something to look and something to do um. and the frequency is I just put it over here, not touching nothing it is saying 700, hope you guys can read it 730 kilohertz 730 kilohertz not bad if I put it on the input and the primary coil itself it is saying now yeah it's all over the place now I have a load on it, um, that load, now it's saying 1.4 megahertz, if I remove the load from it, I'm going to put it over here, and I'm going to measure it one more time, oh, it's still saying 1.4 megahertz. Mm, that is very fast and over here measuring over here just loose like that it is saying 736 now yeah, the wires are in the way let me put the wires beneath the meter so yeah that's not going to work anyway put it over here it is saying 735 yeah something in that range kilohertz and if I put it over here, it is saying 1.4 megahertz. So that's pretty fast. I was going to try a 5.5 timer on this to, you know, play with the frequency adjustment and so on. But since it's working at such a high uh, frequency, don't think I'm going to do that. Don't see any point in that. And I really don't know if a 5.5 timer can go so high uh, in the frequency. But uh, what I want to do next is um, to use a uh, ignition coil. I have used them before in one of my early, early videos. One of those videos without audios. Um, I'm going to try to go uh, from the battery to the oscillator uh, circuit to the uh, ignition coil and then 
uh, to some capacitor, maybe a spark gap, yeah I think a spark gap, and then to the primary. And hopefully if that works, I don't know if it works, but I'm gonna try. So I can, um, because the voltage over here is around uh, one and a half thousand, 1500 volts. It's not that high, I wanna go higher, see what I can get. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, the sparks that are coming, the sparks that are coming from the top load are not dangerous, on, uh, not in my setup, but uh, I, ju I have put my finger on it yesterday, and after three seconds, it literally burned a piece of my finger, and it smelled real bad, so I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm uh, gonna set it one more time. I can even light up one of these uh, off the shelf uh, LED light bulb. These are the ones you can see in my pulse motor testing. If I uh, put it close enough, you can see it is lighting up. Not much, but still, it is completely unmodified. Yeah. And then, of course, but these uh, tubes with the gas in it, these are the best ones for uh, these kind of Tesla coil projects. Anyway, I think I showed uh, all I have to show on this. I'm gonna remove the clips. As you can see, it is here in my hand. So next step will be try to introduce the ignition coil in it and see how it goes. Hopefully it can work. I don't know, gonna try. Okay, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And uh, by the way, I haven't stopped with the pulse motor. There is more coming on those. Just taking a break. Ah, before I uh, finish it off, I also finish my uh, load panel for the pulse motor testing of the coils this side EC side DC side and I'm using read switches to switch the norm <laughs> anyway thanks for watching